Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about strings and pointers. So hopefully by this point, you've looked at the examples of pointers and also arrays and pointers. That'll give you sort of a preview in what's going on here, because as you'll remember, strings in C are just null terminated character arrays. So we've seen doing strings this way, where we say char t, and that's equal to some string and this is a string literal this puts the characters from that string literal into array t along with the null terminator at the end but i can also use a character pointer To point to some string literal in memory. So let's print these. We'll do this for each of these. So for P, we'll say its address is some address. Actually, just to make sure that this lines up, we're going to put it in a 14 wide field, or let's do 16 just so we have enough room. And then let's print the actual string. So we have the address of P and then just P by itself. So we're going to do the same thing for S and for T. Let's make sure we print out the correct ones here. And let's take a look and see what this looks like. So here we have a pointer, a pointer, and an array. Now you'll see that these are all eight bytes if we look at that that actual address here now you, you may be thinking yes but these are pointers so what do they actually point to so for this let's add what they're actually pointing to because that's actually going to be kind of interesting. So you'll notice where those are pointing is very different from where they, where the variable is. And that's because it's a different location in memory. Those string literals are stored in static memory. The array is actually stored in memory. So if we wanted to see where those were, we could do a for loop and look at the address of each, but they would all be in the same general area because this array is pointing to the first address where it's storing those values. So in fact, if you, you'll do the math here, you'll notice that these are 14 bytes away believe that's right and the reason for that is a nice way to do this is I'm going to create a character pointer and I'm going to assign that equal to T and while it's not equal to the null terminator. We're going to print F T. So we're losing the index here, though. So we're going to want to have a 
we're going to want to have an index too. So let's say, well, C pointer plus index. Again, we can use we can use pointer arithmetic here. And what this allows us to do is we don't lose our pointer. And we also only need to increment one thing. So we'll say T of index is equal to some character address. And then we'll do P here. So T of index. And we could use either T or the pointer, but I think just to be consistent, we'll do C pointer plus index to get that value back. Actually, this should just be index. And we want to see what the pointer is pointing to. So that's going to be a void pointer of C pointer plus index. So even though I'm using a ray indexing in my output to be consistent with how the loop is working, I want to use the pointer arithmetic, the same pointer arithmetic I'm using to actually go through the array. So this will go through the array until we get to the null terminator, which we know is there because we initialize this with no size and set it equivalent to a string literal. So we're going to be that the number of characters plus one for the null terminator. So that should work for us. It's not a void, that's a void pointer. And I have an infinite loop because I need to increment index. Okay, so you can kind of see this is AB2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to ABE. And then AC0 would be the next word boundary for this pointer to to start. So looks like there's 12 characters. So we are wasting one byte because 13 to 14, yes. Yeah, so, um, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. But notice all of these values are stored in the same place the array is because the array has memory allocated for it when you declare it. The character pointers are pointing to strings that are off in static memory because we assign those to be equal to pointers. So we're not allocating, we're not copying those values into our stack memory. We're saying, hey, these string literals exist somewhere in static memory, point there. So you'll notice that where those pointers are pointing to is very different from where these values are. And we'll do some examples of where things are allocated in memory at some point. So, okay, so this is kind of a lot of really not too necessary stuff. So I'm going to comment this out. So I'll comment that out for now because we don't want that. It's not really part of what we're concerned with, but I just wanted you to see it. We have these strings and I'm going to copy this code because not only can we print these as strings, notice these are all characters. So I'm going to leave most of this the same, except instead of a string, I'm going to print a character. And I'll also print its integer equivalent. So this will be we're going to dereference the strings here or dereference the pointer and notice the pointer is pointing to that first character. So if we dereference it, we're going to get an alias to the first character. Now T is a little trickier. There's no reason we can't just dereference it since we can treat those the same. Or we can do T 
of index 0. Either one works. So I'll do that. They're equivalent. Hopefully you see that. In fact, just to, to show that that's the case, I'll, I'll do two Ds for that, just to show that dereferencing T or saying T0 is essentially the same thing. So here you can see we're getting the first H, lowercase t, and the capital A. Those are the values that we would expect if we just print those as a character. So a couple other sort of interesting things we can do is if we take this example again, In fact, I'm going to leave that for now, and I'm, I'll, we'll do this one first, because I think it might be the, the more interesting thing. We can add one here, and print one character passed. Whoops, that should be S. So that should be S2. Um, and so for T, we'll dereference T plus 1. And then we'll also say index 1. So, so ignore the bottom one for now. Notice if we do character plus 1, we get the second character of each of those strings. Now what's sort of interesting, and hopefully this will help you understand a little more about how strings work, if we print the string using p plus 1 or s plus 1 or t plus 1, and let's go ahead and do the same thing here. So it doesn't like we have something it doesn't like. I don't need the address here because that's already uh, an address. So let's see. I think that should give me what I need. So let's see what these bugs are. So 40, ah, I need to put that in parentheses. Actually, we know where the addresses are. So let's, uh, let's just ditch the addresses here. I think that's going to make it easier. Let's just print out the characters. Yeah, because I was even printing out the wrong values before. So let me think how I want to do this. I just need to print out the characters to show you what's going on. None of the other stuff has actually changed. So if I do that, and I think that should be correct. And then we'll do something similar here. We really just want to print out the string at this point. So let's just print out the string. Okay, so I think that should clean it up and be a little clearer about what we're doing. We're just trying to print the character, right? We already know where the addresses are, so let's not worry about trying to get all that output cleaned up. I think this should be sufficient for us. And 41 doesn't like something. Ah, yeah, I don't, I don't need to dereference it here because I'm not using a character. I'm actually treating it like a string, and a string actually, as I think hopefully you see, is actually a string pointer that it's looking for. And you'll notice when I print the string at p plus 1, it prints the string from character 1 and, and on. So let's print, actually, instead of the, the string here,
let's print the character plus eight. It's just to show that we can do that. We could actually do the same thing with the string if we wanted. So here we get the eighth character of each of those strings. So we're just going to add some spaces, make sure the output looks a little nicer. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with strings in the end. I think it's an interesting thing to see. So I'll copy that string code and we'll change that one to an eight. And you can see we get the string starting with that eighth character. So this is going to print until it sees an old terminator. If we printed something outside the string or if we gave it an index that was outside of the string, we would run into trouble because we would see whatever just happened to be a memory, which may or may not be the null terminator that we would like. We do want to be careful doing this. We want to make sure that whatever start value we get for that string is still a valid index inside the string. And unfortunately, C doesn't keep track of that for us. We have to be careful that we're doing, that we're working inside the valid indices of the string. A couple other things. When we're working with strings, Sometimes we're going to want to print the string using pointer arithmetic. So let's create an integer, a new pointer. And let's say we're going to set it equal to the string T just to show you that it works inside either a pointer that's pointing to a static location or a char pointer that's pointing to it, an array of characters. And we'll say while when we dereference S, we're not equal to the null terminator. So essentially this is saying while S is pointing to a character, not the null terminator, then we can print F. We'll print out of each character and then we'll increment S. Now notice S will no longer point to the start of the string. So if for some reason you don't have access to that location, you're going to want to make sure you don't modify S. You could just put an index in here and, and increment S by that index each time. So let's see how this works. Oh, I already had S. Let's call it str pointer. And you can see there's my string that I printed using pointer arithmetic. So this is a technique we'll use a lot. Keep in mind, pointer, uh, strings are just arrays of characters. So all the stuff we talked about with pointers and arrays also applies to strings since they're, they're also arrays.